For episode seven of Yuzuru Hanyu is my emergency contact, the Fan You Fan Me podcast, we will cover several topics I imagine are pretty common for the average Fan You. The infiltration of Yuzu into seemingly every moment of your day. The realisticness of your completely real relationship with Yuzu. Your velociraptor ferocity to protect Yuzu and fantasizing about Yuzu carrying your Trader Joe's bags up to your apartment for you. Okay, maybe that one's just for me. But I kinda doubt it. If you're like me, you've started to notice that Yuzu likes to get your attention, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, he seems to make himself known in some rather unlikely places, even when you may think you weren't even looking for him. There is a pair of black gloves in my closet. The first time I noticed them folded neatly on top of each other on the shelf, I nearly stumbled backward out of the closet. Has Yuzu already started moving his things in? I certainly didn't remember putting them there. Obviously, now I remember putting them there. But at the time, I thought I was losing my mind. Yeah, I hear your snickers. They aren't lost on me. But this is just one occurrence in a string of bizarre yuzu coincidences. Coincidences? Signs? You decide. One night I was working in my kanji workbook, and the exercise read, You have just received an email from your Japanese pen pal Makiko. Makiko has written you about her boyfriend. Translate her email. I look at the very first sentence about her boyfriend, and I kid you not, I sound out the word aisusukeito. I almost fall off the couch. You can't be serious. I sound it out again and again. No doubt, Makiko and her boyfriend are ice skating. Gasp. <gasps> Makiko's dating Yuzu, too. Then I read the second sentence, which stated that her boyfriend is not skilled at ice skating. Ah, okay. Clearly not Yuzu. I found this so humorous that I posted a picture of the two sentences in my Yuzuru Hanyu Japanese learning group. Remember, it is a thing. Isn't this funny, Minasan? I thought Makiko was dating Yuzu. Someone responded, It says ice skating, not figure skating. As if I had compared figure skating to hot dog eating. And we all know in that case, Makiko would have been dating Chansung instead of Yuzu, and hence my sister would crazy. Perhaps my favorite moment came from my local weatherman. Wow, there's a sentence for a very different and inaccurate podcast. I was talking on the phone to my mom while half watching the weather report when I heard, there's a little bit of rotation on the radar. It's like when a figure skater jumps and pulls his arms in tight in order to spin faster. Mysteriously, I now find storm fronts far more attractive. Then there was the episode of Perfect Strangers that is all about Balky making hot chocolate and thus meeting an Olympic athlete. Larry Appleton, you're not the only one who couldn't believe that. People, this was in the 80s. How could they possibly have known about the magical combination of Olympians, Olympians named Yuzuru, that is, and hot chocolate? Binky binky! And did you know that Beaver Cleaver's next-door neighbor was training to be in the 1968 Olympics? Or that Ward thought Wally was going to be a future Olympian? Please tell me you saw those episodes, too, and that I didn't imagine them. Jamata, Wally. Jamata, Beav. I mean, even my phone is auto-correcting random words to Yuzu now. At least, I'm pretty sure it's my phone doing that. I think this is the universe's way of saying, you're getting warmer. Warmer. Scalding hot. Blaze. Yuzu is it. Then again, there are 126,510,637 people in Japan. Of those 126,510,637, 126,510,636 either want to marry Yuzu, 
marry their child off to Yuzu or be Yuzu. The one person who doesn't? The mother of Pyeongchang's figure skating silver medalist, Shoma Uno. And let's get real. She probably loves Yuzu too. Did I mention he's the greatest figure skater of all time? Yuzu, not Shoma. Sorry, Shoma. I know you did the fan use a solid by making Yuzu giggle like that when you couldn't get seated on your chair in that one interview. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Yeah, honto ni ne, jin jin. Mo kaikyo tatsei desu yo. Eh, da, daijou desu ka? Eh, so, so to kagashi ni kite ru. Da, kai takai shite agemashou ka? Daijou desu? Honto ni. One of the fan use posted on Facebook that Figure skating was invented because one day Yuzuru Hanyu would be born. I might have cried a little. This sentiment was right on the tiny nostril nose. Speaking of fan yus, Yuzu has millions of fans in other countries around the world, though he is Japan's treasure. And yes, when Japan was asked this question, it responded in Japanese, but with the subtext of, don't be silly, there's no question. He'll probably be prime minister someday. Or, if he wants to stay out of politics, they may just gift him Japan. This enormous framed piece of paper says Japan is yours now. Bow. Arigato gozaimasu. Bow. Arigato gozaimasu. Bow. 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 We'd also like to give you another one of the emperor's daughters. Yeah. This is an incredibly viable relationship. I think each fan use extremely viable relationship with Yuzu varies and is especially dependent on your level of delusion. I mean, imagination. Some fan use are content to leave it at, gee, I wish Yuzu was my boyfriend. But then they move on with their lives. Other fan use take it a little further. I wonder what kind of boyfriend Yuzu would be. Um, I think we can all agree. Awesome! I'll let you earthy fan you stay in your dark corners on what you wonder. And then some of us <clears throat> think we need to make sure that the black spandex pants and we love Irene gloves we just took out of the laundry need to be put away on Yuzu's side of the closet. Like I said, levels of imagination... For those of you who currently have a load of darks in the washing machine, this next post is for you. Oh, and don't forget to buy more eggs the next time you're at the grocery. Se no. I wonder how many hours you can watch one person before some type of common law marriage goes into effect. Because I would say in the past six months, I have heard Yuzuru Hanyu's voice more than most people have heard their spouses over several years. Or, in the case of many of my married monosyllabic named friends, over the courses of their entire marriages. And I am totally okay with this. I moved into a new apartment shortly after the Winter Olympics, which made for perfect timing since Yuzu was free to move in with me. It was also convenient that I was renting a two-bedroom. Here is where my sister would hang her head and make another comment about how I'm not a real girl. Arima and Obi-Wan moved in too, but they tend to hang out in the living room. Sweetheart, the alpha, is always an arm's length away, regardless of what room I'm in. We're hoping eventually Kaneki will move in for real, instead of just Skyping every once in a while, as he does now from Anteiku. Since Sweetheart already Skypes with Yuzu and Pusan, we're set up for that. But back to Yuzu living with us. One day I had a Yuzu press conference playing on my computer in the second bedroom. From a couple rooms away, it struck me how much it sounded like Yuzu was actually in the other room talking. You know, just giving a phone interview in Japanese. It was freaky and awesome, all at the same time. And I thought, wow. I guess this is what it would be like if Yuzu really lived here. Granted, if Yuzu did actually live with me, I would have a lot easier time getting all my groceries up to the fourth floor. As it stands, I practice the pack mule method, better to stumble over the edge and tumble into the Grand Canyon with one forlorn and fading hee-haw 
instead of making more than one trip from the car. And remember, Yuzu has a tensile strength, so that has to account for at least four Trader Joe's bags. There is one thing we would have to sort out, though. The whole raw egg eating thing. Tamago Gohan. Literally, egg rice. You take a bowl of rice, crack a raw egg into it, mix it up with some soy sauce, and have at it. How is this a thing? The first time I saw Yuzu do this, I had the instinct to dive into the TV, slap the chopsticks away, and yell, Don't do that! It will kill you! What a very American thing to say. But seriously, a raw egg is a raw egg, right? These can't be magic Japanese eggs. I have since found out that these are indeed magic Japanese eggs. If people in Japan can do that, why am I concerned I'll be poisoned if I don't refrigerate ketchup? When my sister saw Yuzu doing this, she instantly felt vindicated about the video she made me watch of Chansung eating bone-in chicken for a solid 40 minutes. Truly. I've never seen anything like it. My sister was equally as amazed by the video, but not nearly in the same way I was. It was like some kind of Korean poultry horror flick. He would put the entire chicken leg in his mouth and then pull it out clean. There are some sounds you should never hear. The sound of a human chewing on chicken cartilage is one of those sounds. Even Kaneki got a little squeamish. So I told her I would rather Yuzu silently scoop raw egg rice with his expertly particular chopstick style any day of the week, but I still don't need to be present while he's doing it. That can be his poker night. If you read the blog, you might have noticed an author's note under that last post saying, For foe. And what exactly does that mean? Well, I'm not going to tell you. That's another story for another day. Maybe. Let's just say that at this point in the blog, a separate timeline fractured off the main one for Marty McFly and not even Doc Brown could get it straightened out. Just trust me that if that timeline story ever gets told, you won't want to miss it, and you'll want to bring your poos on tissue cases. For now, I'm going to take a page out of Yuzuru Vegu's thesis on elusiveness by simply throwing in a yuzu giggle and moving on. (laughs) At the top of this episode, I referenced Velociraptor ferocity when protecting yuzu. Rawr! Since becoming a fan you, I have experienced this several times and have to admit that the longer I am a fan you, the more extreme it gets. But on this particular occasion, it was my first glimpse into how quickly the fan yous will assemble. Avengers who? When Yuzu is threatened, be it from paparazzi, hateful tweets, unfair scoring, or a vending machine eating his yen without giving him his ganabar. Seno. I now know what it feels like to belong to a swarm of killer bees. The other day on Facebook, the very first post in my newsfeed was surrounded by exclamation points and alarm emojis. No, it wasn't my sister posting about a new Chansung tantalizing guppy face photo. Remember, those are volcanic. It was from a fan you. She was sounding the Hanyu harassment alarm. Apparently, paparazzi had taken photos of Yuzu while he was leaving the Toronto Cricket Club and they included clear images of the car he was getting into. They claimed these photos were unauthorized by Yuzu. I wanted to point out that I'm unaware of authorized paparazzi photos, but figured that probably wasn't the best time. Within seconds, the fan yous took flight like a giant swirling cloud of vindication out to rain down holy hell on these paparazzi and anyone who hit share on those photos. They reported the photos as breaches of privacy on every website. They directly contacted individuals to have them removed from their Tumblr pages. They started hashtag save Yuzu's privacy on Twitter. Several bought plane tickets and mace, Yuzu scented, and headed straight for Toronto. Do not pass go, do not collect 20,000 yen. I mean, I was at work while all this was going down, 
so I could only check Expedia for flights for the following morning. And while I couldn't find the yuzu-scented vase, I was ready to pack some Trader Joe's yuzu sauce in a 3.4-ounce carry-on bottle because I'm quite certain that stuff would still sting like a mother if you got it in your eye. It wasn't too long before one of the admins, or yuzu sipping a matcha McFrappe while sitting on his bed scrolling through Facebook on his iPad, stepped in and tranquilized everyone. Almost before it even started, it was over. R.I.P. Yuzu Cargate 2018. Come to think of it, I should have just suggested that whoever had been charged of making Yuzu Shoulder Scandal 2018 disappear should have been put on the hunt for the car pictures. That would have taken care of that. Granted, that may have been the government of Japan. I have to admit, it was kind of empowering being part of an international strike force for about 20 minutes. It was cool to think that people in Slovakia and the Philippines and Italy and Japan were all pissed off about the same thing as me as I stood at the copy machine. The song We Are the World just popped into my head. Fan news. We are the world. And we will hunt you down if you come after our beloved Hanyu Senshu. If you saw glimpses of your fanuness in any of these posts, you might want to check out Fanyu Fan Me's level of imagination on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Redbubble, or FanyuFanMe.com. We welcome you no matter what level you're currently at, but we know eventually you'll be side by side with us at the laundromat, separating your lights from Yuzu's darks. Until next time, say it with me, Yuzuru Hanyu. The Fan You Fan Me podcast is a Back to the Forest production. Back to the forest? <laughs> um, you know, just kidding. <laughs>